your grace and your mercy that you have upon our life. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the days of our life. Thank you, Father, for being such a loving and forgiving God. Thank you for the many, many blessings that you have given us. Heavenly Father, we know without you we are nothing. So we'll continue to praise your holy name. We'll continue to honor you, Heavenly Father. We'll continue to give you all the glory, for you are worthy to be praised. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children. We, th we ask that you continue to watch over them, Heavenly Father. Guide them and lead them in the righteous way, Heavenly Father. For they need you in their life, Heavenly Father. For without you, Father, we don't know which way they'll turn out to be. So, Heavenly Father, continue to watch over them. Continue to look after them and keep them from out of harm's way, Heavenly Father. For there's so many wrong things that they can follow, Father. So we ask that you, Heavenly Father, to intervene. Watch over them, Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to help us with our church, that you will continue to send members here, Heavenly Father, that you will increase our finances, that you will increase us in all aspects of our church, Heavenly Father. For the church need more members. We need more, more members, more members. Um, we need more um, income, Heavenly Father, coming into the church also, Heavenly Father. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to guide us, Heavenly Father. Continue to lead us in a righteous way, Heavenly Father. But without you, Heavenly Father, we wouldn't be able to do anything. So Lord, we ask you to continue to be with us, Heavenly Father. And we will continue to uplift you, Heavenly Father. We will continue to give you all the glory, Heavenly Father. All the honor, Heavenly Father. Because we know without you, Father, we are nothing, Heavenly Father. Without you, Heavenly Father, we wouldn't be able to walk, Heavenly Father. We wouldn't be able to get out of bed, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as you know, already know, have our day planned out for us, Heavenly Father, before we even wake up in the morning, you already know what you have planned for us. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, that, that for waking us up this morning, Heavenly Father. But there are many, Heavenly Father, who didn't wake up this morning. So we thank you, Father. We'll continue to bless you, Heavenly Father. We'll continue to give you all the glory, all the honor, Heavenly Father. But we know that you are the best thing, Heavenly Father, in this world. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. GHS forces. A Christian home. Oh, give us home this fame upon the Savior, where Christ is head and counselor and guide. Where every child is taught his love and favor and give his heart to Christ, the crucified. How sweet to know that though his footsteps waver, his faithful Lord is walking by his side. GHS 46.
I stand in? It's time for say scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we just sang a beautiful song unto you, a home, a Christian home. A Christian home is a home built on you. Father, we've come to your presence this morning because our home, our hearts are built on you. Father, Lord in heaven, after your son came and died for us and gave us hope and gave us compassion, Father, we live forevermore. Father, we're joyful not because of the food we have. We're joyful not because of the clothing we have, not over the shelter that we have, but Father, for the fact that you loved us first. And Father, because we know that we journey to a better place. Father, we know that we journey to a place where we will live forevermore. Father, we thank you for bringing us to your presence this morning. Lord in heaven, as we're going to open your scriptures, Lord in heaven, let us dig deep this morning. Father, Lord, even the angels who benefit from the word that you're going to give each and every one of us this morning. Because, Father, we believe. Because you say where two or three are gathered in your midst, sorry, in your presence you are in our midst. Father, we are more than two and we are more than three. And we know that your presence is here this morning. And, Lord in heaven, you will minister into our hearts. Father, we thank you for your word. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Today we're going to take our last side of the scriptures for volume 49 to 52. It's going to be lesson number 676. Who remembered what we spoke about last week? Amen. Praise the Lord. We all stood here to thank our young brother who remembered. Amen. It means that he's growing in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is very important these days that our young people grow in the presence of God because the world is changing very fast. It's changing. The end times are coming. We need them. We need them to continue to spread the word of God. Amen. Let us as parents not be tired. Let's not be tired of paying attention to our children because they're a gift from God. Amen. And we'll see why we are not supposed to be tired. So last week, last week's sermon ties into today's sermon, personal evangelism. Amen. We spoke about giving. How our Father in heaven, through his own law, has said, if you love me, you follow my commandment. Amen. If you love your Father in heaven, you give. You know, when I taught here, I spoke about the fact that if we don't give, then it's impossible to evangelize. Amen? Because people need resources to go out and preach the word of God. It is impossible to have a shelter where we can gather together and praise the Lord. Amen? It all needs to be paid for. It is impossible to enjoy the heat during the cold and to enjoy the cold during the heat times so that we can feel comfortable in the presence of the Lord if we do not give. It is impossible to bring people who cannot afford to come to the house of service if we do not give. Like I said, we need to give materially, money-wise, and our time to God. But God is asking me and you that since he has asked us to love him as his children, that we give in love. Amen? That we give cheerfully, not grudgingly. Because think about it, 
First of all, our Father in heaven has asked you to give your life first. That's the first thing. Because he knows that once you give your heart, then it becomes very, very easy to give materially because you understand that what he has given to you is for you to keep. It's not yours. It's to give back to him. Amen? I pray that our Father in heaven will touch our hearts and will continue to give those who don't have so that they can give bountifully to the house of the Lord. Amen? I pray today that we will be bountiful and cheerful giver in Jesus' name. John chapter 1 verse 41, personal evangelism, it's also given. Amen? It's given your time. John chapter 1 verse 41 is our memory verse. If you have the size of the scriptures book, it's page number 365. It's lesson 49, volume 49 to 52. Page 465. If you have opened to it, fine. If you have not, you can open your Bible to John chapter 1 verse 41. After the count of two, let's all read together. One, two. He first finded his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. John chapter 1, verse 41. Praise the Lord. Let's read our text. Amen. And then we go from there. We will see today that Jesus himself, Jesus showed example to us how to evangelize. You know, I have said here on the pulpit that sometimes we forget our friends, we forget our families, you know, we forget our mothers, forget our fathers, forget our grandfather, our grandmothers, our sons and daughters. We forget them. You know, you use them to practice, amen? Because they're the closest to you. And see how it goes. I know that sometimes, you know, they say it's difficult to share the word of God with family members, but sometimes it's easier, amen? You know, some, a lot of time we jokingly share the word of the Lord with my mom. It's always very um, splendid. We read from verse 35. Amen. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking unto Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. When it was said, Behold, the Lamb of God, the introduction. How are you introducing Jesus to other people? It says, Be immediately behold, the Lamb of God. It works. Personal evangelism is very effective. And what happened? And then they followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned and saw them following him. No, fo them following. And said unto them, What seek ye? When you evangelize, you ask the question to the person you're evangelizing to. What seek ye in this world? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Do you ask the question, do you evangelize in such a way that you put yourself in somebody's shoes? By the grace of God, next time I will come here, we will speak about being a successful minister for God. Looking at Paul. Paul was a successful minister because he studied his environment. He said to the Gentiles, I became a Gentile. To the Jews, I became a Jew. 
We'll talk about the next time we'll come here and gather in the presence of the Lord. It is very, very important to be strategic. Christ himself is asking, what do you seek? When you go to preach the word of God to our brothers and sisters, you have to be strategic like Jesus did. Sometimes when we evangelize, it is not effective because of the fact that we do not follow the example laid to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you seek? That was the question by our Lord Jesus Christ. They said unto him, Rabbi, which is interpreted as Master. Where dwellest thou? Amen. Do you ask the question? You know, I've come to you because I'm asking, where do you live? It's an interesting question, right? Where do you live? Where are you going to? What do you seek? These are very, very important evangelic, uh, evangelism questions. If you ask me where I live, I'll give you my house address. Has anyone ever asked you, you say, I live in the house of the Lord? Do you know the house you're living in is the house of the Lord? And to ask you, what do you seek? Have you ever answered, I seek life everlasting? The way that we preach the word of God to our brethren is very important. Strategic, just like Jesus himself. He said unto them, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finded his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And apparently, that's actually my last name. Amen? The day following Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Why was my father called Cephas, which is also called Cephas, which is in Aramaic, is because he had a heart of the stone to follow Jesus. He turned around his life and left the life of the old and cho chose the life of Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. Yes, he also followed the life of his own, meaning that he left, left a life that everybody is following at that time. Um, I think it was in the 30s or so, because it was mostly idol worshiping. He left all those behind and followed the life of Jesus, even though at that time, they, apparently they believed in that there is a God and there is the devil. You know, there's the God, but there's the devil also. And Yefu, where they call the devil in my language, and Yefu meaning somebody who is consistently angry all the time. What a description. <laughs> Amen. In, you know, when I think about the word that my people call Satan, it's very interesting, right? You know, when you get, I remember that time when we were kids, when you get very angry, they'll ask you, are you Satan? 
Amen. Because he's described as somebody who is consistently angry. Praise the Lord. Yes, he chose a life for himself. You know, since you answered, you know, my young friend and brother, you know, it is important this time that we are in to choose a life for yourself and not follow other young people. You know, there's going to be so much noise here. They try to drag you here and drag you there. But you have to follow a man of your own and follow your own path. Even when people laugh at you, even when people will mock at you and think that you are not smart enough, follow your path. You know, I don't believe in evolution, but I believe in God. I believe in creation. I have been told that you are a very good scientist, but why don't you believe in evolution? Because it is not proven to me. Even though the, the, the world surrounding me, the environment surrounding me believe in something else, I stood up for myself and I still stand up for myself. And I encourage you, my young brother, that you only stand up for yourself and stand up for Jesus wherever you are. And by doing that, you become an example to your peers. You become a leader. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. That's verse 44. Philip founded Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, can there, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, come and see. You know, sometimes, I know our time is going, being spent, we'll finish on time. Sometimes, because we have not even started the side of scriptures, praise the Lord, we're just still on the introduction. But we'll be on time. Amen? Have you gone for evangelism and you've been told, he said, can something come out of Nazareth? You have an accent. You are not well read. Look at how you are dressed. Look at how you talk. You are not smart. You are not intelligent. Can something come out of Nazareth? And you're saying, Amen, yes. Why? He says, come and see. All you have to say, listen to what I have to tell you. Come and see with me. Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. It's a pattern of evangelism, and we'll go into it to see how Jesus exemplified personal evangelism and how the disciples also made an example of how we need to evangelize personally, bringing your brother unto Jesus. Amen. And Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou that thou see greater things than this? And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen? Personal evangelism. You know, we've seen how practically Jesus himself demonstrated how it needs to be. And we saw how John the Baptist himself introduced Jesus. He says, Behold, 
the Lamb of God. Testifying to who Jesus is. And from then, five souls, five souls who later became the pillar of the church of God. Andrew was one of the first disciples who heard John's declaration. He was convinced he followed Christ, and he convinced his brother Peter to join him, and they all became great teachers and and evan uh, um, followers of Jesus, disciples of Jesus. You know, I have said that um, my father consistently was very, very, the church was very close to his heart. You know, um, I said here the last time, that the song, it is good to praise the Lord, hallelujah. I have a brother who at that time was, I think, about six years old. He didn't know the words. He used to sing it, a coo, 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 praise the Lord. We still call him a coo, 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 praise the Lord. His children will hear that and ask him, Daddy, why are you being called a coo, 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 for a praise the Lord? He can then, at that time, evangelize to them and say, right from when I was a kid, even though I couldn't sing well, my father allowed me to sing. I remember at that time that even though we didn't know how to pray, my father was asked to just pray. Just pray. We had, he had faith. Do you know at the age, very young, six, seven years old, I will pray for the whole house. Nobody's going to pray after that. Say, Benjamin, can you open the prayers? Whatever I'm saying, I believe. I believe. Do we believe like Christ did? Do we believe and do we teach our young children. Christ himself, like I said, personal evangelism. After Andrew was brought, had, uh, was brought, Andrew brought Peter. He won the heart of Philip almost without effort. Philip was convinced to convince Nathaniel like we read in our text. We can see the effectiveness of personal evangelism. Through a string, five souls were won, and they became the pillar of the house of God. And today, <clears throat> that same example, a brother bringing his own brother, a sister bringing her sister, blood sister, a husband strengthening the wife in the house of the Lord, a wife praying fervently for her husband. A son bringing a father to the house of the Lord and a daughter praying fervently for the mother. A grandmother praying for her grandson. A grandfather bringing the granddaughter to the house of the Lord, hand in hand, discussing the word of God. A brother or sister walking on the street has compassion and shares the word of the Lord one on one with someone. Personal evangelism is very, very important and mandatory and is very effective. What it is a one-to-one -one sharing of the word of God. It's saying personal. You have to do it yourself. That's why it's called personal. It leads so many sinners to the house of the Lord. 
Think about the colleague that is very close to you. Share the word of God with the colleague. Give them the gift of life by giving a tract or a Bible. Personal evangelism has to be if I, exemplified also. As you share the word of God, you need to live your life like Christ so they are an example to the person that you have shared the word of God to. It is the easiest and cheapest way of disseminating the word of God. Even when it's very, it's very difficult to ban. Because if they say, well, in cities or countries where they ban gathering of people together, personal evangelism is one on one. You are not gathering. You're just sharing the word of God with somebody. It's cheap. You know, as you pass on, you are going to the store, you share a tractor, you share the word of God with someone. You know, on and last week Sunday, after we left the church, now give a testimony. We still have some time. So we went into Walmart with my wife. We purchased grocery. So... I was, I was scanning the products and putting them on the trolley. As I was scanning and scanning, one gentleman walked by and uh, as I stood up, was trying to hug us. I was, I was facing that way. My wife was facing this way. So my wife immediately moved away. So it drew my attention. So I turned around and then Never seen him before. He said, Brother, may the Lord bless you. I said, How do you know that I'm a Christian? He said, I look at the way you look and the way your wife looks. And he said, Today that the dressing in the house of the Lord is perverted. He said, Yet. Yeah. He said to me, he said, I was born and raised in this country. I've been preaching, I've been preaching and telling young people. He's young himself. He said, what church do you go to? I said, by the grace of God, Deeper Life Christian Ministry. Find the time to join us sometimes. He said, never pervert your dressing. Don't look around you. Continue to dress. So look at you, how you're well dressed, and look at your wife. Everything covered. Personal evangelism. Even though he's a child of God, we had a child complimenting, he strengthened us in the, in the house of the Lord. How did he know? Personal evangelism, you have to live your life to attest that also. Living your life in the right way will also evangelize to other people. If everybody else is cheating the system and you're cheating the system, then you're the same. It is difficult for you to evangelize. You know, if I was wearing like a torn jeans with a, a hold or my wife dressing scampi, he would never come to us. Proclaim Jesus. Personal evangelism is very easy way to reach out to people. Christ has mandated me and you. It's compulsory for us. If you are the child of God, it's a mandate. You should do it joyfully, willingly, and cheerfully. And I will add, bountifully. Meaning that you evangelize to as many as possible. Because he has told us to share the word of the Lord he said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That is John chapter 4, verse 34. He paid the price for me and you to redeem us. He has redeemed us. He has given us the commission to go and redeem other people. Amen. 
we encourage each and every one of you to please continue to discharge your responsibility. We can see that in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, 30 to 36, not to neglect evangelism, the necessity of urgent, the necessity and urgency of personal evangelism. Why is it necessary? It is tasked to us as a task given to us by our Lord Jesus. It's urgent today because of the fact that many souls are being lost. In fact, the devil is grabbing many souls than we are grabbing for God. Because if we don't do that, hell is a reality. Many will burn for life forever. And that is not the mandate that Christ has given me and you. He wants us to go out to win souls daily and diligently. And we need to be serious too. We can see that in 2 Corinthians 5.11, Luke 16.23. The value of our soul actually surpasses everything that you can think about in the world. Who do we live for? Who the, the value of our soul. The value of our soul is so big. That is why Christ came to die, to save that soul. The value of my soul and yours. It is so important to God that he gave his son. Let's teach the word of God. That is why it is necessary and it's very, very urgent. Because many lives are perishing every day. Matthew 16, verse 26. For what is a man profited if he, had, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There is no exchange for the soul. Amen? In my view. Because whatever you give and if you lose your soul, where is the profit? The precious blood of Jesus was shed to redeem and secure our freedom. If we don't start now, if we have not started so many years ago, then it will be too late because many souls are dying, are dying. We need to preach one-on-one. -on -one. The human soul is a battleground between God and devil. As the devil is trying to drag you, God is pulling you into his kingdom. That's why the battle is. That's why the Lord said in heaven that the night cometh when no man can work. We all need to work. We all need to be very zealous. It's a battleground because that is why he says we battle against powers and principalities. We don't see that. It is the war of the spirit. I pray that our Father in heaven will keep us safe every minute. Let's continue to teach to our neighbors, backsliders in the house of the Lord. It is now. It is now. It is not six months from now. It is not one year from now. It is not five years from now. It is not 20 years from now. It is very, very serious. Because souls are perishing. We need to personalize evangelism one-on-one. -on -one. The church should aim at raising an army. So because it says what? We fight against it's principalities. So it's a war. So because since it's a war, we need to raise an army to fight the war in the house of God. You know, when you are at war, it means that you're ready all the time because you don't know when the enemy is going to strike. You're ready all the time when you're at war. It's not a time of peace. Because the devil is there fighting us every day. We need to all the time be on our guard and raise as many armies as possible. Armies for Christ. People who are armed, 
spiritually, not with guns. We don't fight with guns and machetes because we do not war against flesh. We war against powers and principality. So let's get warriors that are strengthened, people who pray all the time, are dedicated. Let's raise an army to save soul for our Lord Jesus Christ. The church needs to train people. You cannot raise an army without training. Amen? When you recruit people, whether it be the job, they need to be trained. The church needs to train, organize evangelism outreach, like the church does once every four weeks to do evangelism, going around and sharing the word of God. It should be an everyday thing for me and you. Like I said, every opportunity you find on the street, in the store, share the word of God. When one soul is saved, heaven is very joyful. We saw with the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son, when he came back, how joyful the father was. Every soul that is saved, our Lord in heaven is joyful about it. The lifestyle of a soul winner. What is the lifestyle of a soul winner? We'll soon conclude. What is your lifestyle? You need to be born again. I have said it here. You cannot win people without with having blemish in your own life. Like I said, that, that brother walked up to us. I asked him, how do you know that we are Christians? Very simple. It's a Sunday. He knows that Christians go to church. And he knows that we need to be properly clothed. How is your personal life? Are you an ambassador of Christ? You know, when they say you are an ambassador of a country, you're representing that country where you are. So you, as a child of God, you are an ambassador of God. So you need to conduct yourself in such a way that it to convince people to stay in the house of the Lord. Be proof to my brothers and sisters. Live your life in such a way that you have compassion on others. So that your life will convince people to come to the house of the Lord. Effective methods and procedures in personal evangelism. Methods that are employed differ from one person to the other. There's the direct mes uh, method, whereby you introduce yourself to a sinner and you preach the word of God. There are indirect ways whereby you share tracts, you share the Bible. Like I said before, the question that was asked, are you asking the effective question? My brothers and sisters, are you asking the effective question? What seek ye in this world? What have you come to see? What is life all about in this world? Asking the right question. So if you die now, where are you going to? We can also use the friendship method. You evangelize to your friends. You know, you cultivate relationship. You cultivate relationship. You know, men with men, women with women, cultivating relationships so that you can win them to the house of the Lord. So either one on one, Friendship, sharing tracts, sharing the Bible, you know, books, praying, giving out the Bible prayerfully and tracts as you pray upon it. And we need to live our lifestyle so that when we bring them to the house of the Lord, we need to keep them in the house of the Lord to make them armies for God through our lifestyle, leading the sinner to decision.
you need to explain to the sinner how urgent it is. The urgency of him or her turning their life to Christ immediately. It's very urgent because if you die at that moment, what will happen to your soul? The effective way of leading, you know, you ask the question that will allow the sinner to discover him or herself. You know, when you go to, when you go to the hospital, right, the doctor will ask you a series of questions to find out what's wrong with you. And then the doctor will now come to a conclusion to say this is what is wrong with you. You diagonize. To help the sinner diagonize for him or herself where their state of life is at that time. So that it becomes personal. Sin is a disease of the soul. So you need to reveal. Like you go to the hospital. They say, well, you have high blood pressure. They reveal to you what can happen to you if you do not treat the high blood pressure. We do the same. To say, look, sin is a disease. If you don't treat that disease by giving your life to Christ, these are the things that can happen to you. Praise the Lord. Everybody has gone quiet. Everybody is sleeping. Prescribe a remedy. So when you go to the doctor's place, right? When the doctor explains to you, well, this is the... So you explain to the sinner, sin is a disease. And then you say, what can happen? No, if, you, if, you, if you don't give your life to Christ, and if you die, if you don't give your life to Christ, look at things that even in this world that can happen to you. Then when you finish, amen, then you give the treatment. You give the treatment. You prescribe a remedy. You prescribe that Christ is a remedy for sin. Christ is the cure for sin. When we, very importantly, that when we preach the word of God, we have to consistently exalt Christ and not ourselves. We should not delay. We need to let the people know that they cannot delay the urgency of their decision. Immediate decision. We, there are a few things we need to avoid when we deal with soul. We should never, ever exalt ourselves. Christ should be exalted. Amen? Not to exalt ourselves, you know, uh, holier than thou. I'm holier than you are. That would be a mistake. Or to continue to condemn we need to make them understand. Just like when you go to the uh, hospital, they tell, oh, you're going to die tomorrow. Have I blood? You die tomorrow. So uh, you get scared. We should stay away from argument. Preach the word of God. We should stay away from being pompous, scoring points. You know, soul winning needs, familiar, scriptures that will pierce the heart like a, 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 a sword with two uh, sharp edges. You know, there are so many passages, passages. if you see the side the scriptures book, examples of passages that you can help sinners to win their souls. Our effort is to win souls and not to drive souls away. If we go there and we start exalting ourselves and start bringing them down, it becomes difficult to win souls. Question number one. What does personal evangelism mean? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we got the answers. One on one, preaching the gospel of Christ. Amen. How can the church leadership motivate members to be diligently involved in personal evangelism? Praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. Like our brother says, training of uh, believers in the house of the Lord, you know, like through workshops, seminars, on how to win souls. Amen. Enumerate the benefits of involving in personal evangelism. So what is the benefit? What do you benefit from getting yourself involved in personal evangelism? Praise the Lord. She said to transform life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you also derive joy, amen? You know how many lives are, you know, when you, you, you come home and you're happy with yourself and say, Father, thank you very much because, you know, I'm excited, I'm pumped up because of the fact that I'm joyful today. I have brought, you know, you're coming, you walk into church, you see 10 souls. Nobody's looking at you, but you're happy. You're excited. You know, you're happy within you and saying, look at those 10 souls. Actually, are souls that I brought to the house of the Lord. Amen. What shall be the lifestyle of an effective soul winner? What is your lifestyle as an effective soul winner? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be holy. Be an ambassador of Christ Jesus. What steps can a soul winner take to lead a soul to salvation? What steps can you take? What step? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, like a pastor and uh, his wife have said, so asking their status, making friendship, describing the disease when you go to the hospital. You know, you diagnose and say, this is the disease. Amen. And then if you don't treat it, this is how it's going to happen. And then this is the remedy. Amen. What pitfalls must be avoided when leading the soul to the Lord? What do we need to avoid when we are leading souls to the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It looks like either everybody read their side the scriptures book or everybody was listening. Amen. Either way, we bless the name of the Lord. Sorry? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So by the grace of God, our next lesson will be lesson 677. It will be in our new side the scriptures book. And it's going to be led by Brother Stephen Elabo. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Father, we exalt you. We thank you for the fact that your son came and taught us how to teach your word. Father, help us. Help us win souls. Father, Lord in heaven, let us give to your kingdom our time, our resources. Father, because we are created for that, we love you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to thank our teacher for the good lesson that we learn through the Holy Spirit, uh, through him today. And I pray that by the grace of the Lord Almighty God, we continue to teach everyone of us in Jesus' name. Uh, one of my greatest regrets in life is not able to bring my sibling into Christ. 
not able to bring my whole family into Christ. Not that um, I didn't do my best, but the the greatest thing that causes is that when I become born again, I look at the advantage, the the physical blessing that is in accepting Jesus Christ than eternal blessing than accepting Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I don't know if I've told us this story before. I want us to learn from it so that we won't make the same mistake. I don't know, I'm one of the fans of GS message. I don't know if we have listened to that message where he said the greatest mistake he ever he will never commit again is for his dad to die without knowing Christ. And he said when after he knew that he to God, nobody in his family again will ever go without knowing Christ. Uh, what really cost my own is this. I appreciate the person that comforted me. Um, and when I got confronted, I got, I got converted out of uh, I don't want to say strong name because then I did not know what be beyond the future that uh, that life is you and just because in fact what I love most is radio Nick to become a radio Nick so it was when I knew Jesus Christ he established me in the Lord to become what I become today so when the person that comforted me he was not so believed in deeper life but when he saw me like what we learned today he was very he's now 11 very very born again but he believed that uh, there are some things in deeper life that he doesn't accept but when he asked about my question, this is how you will know him. When he asked about, my, about me, he said, for you, it's better for you to go to the palace we are going to grow. So that's how I become a member of the palace. He was the one that converted me. He, did, he is not a member of deeper life, but he said, it's better for you to be going to deeper life. You are going to grow very well there. And I thank God that God used him that time. But along the line, I appreciate all what he did for me. Because it is true prayer, all what I've been saying, you will know that uh, it is true struggling. I came out, out of my family. So we still have some prayer meetings like other denominations whereby they pray. And then some of them, they see prophecy, they see a lot of things. That one quickly carry me away than the present the solution to present problem I know that I'm not grateful I'm really grateful but the solution to present problem quickly carried me away and I'm expecting one of my uh, my protege is, as, is now in United States I remember how we always, it's very, very small, just like a can woman, it's very small, always carrying about, it's now in the United States now. In fact, he too, he now joined CAC. Because that's how my life was, running all those, so till prayer get me out. So as a result of that, most of my family, I took them to where the present solution is going to be solved. Not where eternity is the most essential. Not that in other tribunals, it's not, but when you are talking, I wish you understand what I'm saying. 
So we started going to other church. I'm going to deeper life. I'm going to other. I'm going to deeper life. Until are you able to know that there's still something apart from when you have a problem and that problem is solved? There's still another side of life that you are going to. So what I want to bring that that, that no matter the solution of the problem you have, without holiness. You get what I'm saying this way. Without holiness, without the son daughter of God, you are going to go astray. I remember some of them then in that group we always get together. I remember some of them uh, some of the leader even went with another another somebody woman. But there's nothing they cannot see. There's nothing they cannot see. In fact, I think from there, I didn't know, but they have told me that, oh, you are not going to be in Nigeria. But I didn't know then. But there's no holiness. It's not white garment church, it's not anything. But and I remember even the person that comforted me a long, long, withdraw from them when he saw where they are going. So, but that's where I quickly took my family to, which I believe that our problem could, could be solved. So only one of them follow me, then all other people. But that's one of my greatest regrets for not able to bring them to where they were. And that's what able to let me able to skip through among all of them. So personal evangelism is very, very important. And then it depends on your attitude, on what you have. It is what you have, you are going to offer another person. You can't offer any other person the what, the, what you don't have. And that's why you will see somebody that is born again as our teacher was saying angry. Yeah, why you see somebody that is born again, you see somebody that is going to hell, you make fun of them. And that's why we see somebody that is really born again, when he saw that, oh, these are people who are going to the kingdom of God, he was very, very happy to see them. So, what I'm trying to say is this. The eternity of your family the result of where your family is going is on your hand. And then if you can kneel down, pray unto, unto the Lord about them, and you do not rest by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they are coming to Jesus Christ. And you are going to do it in Jesus' name. Look at what our teacher taught, I mean, I mean, taught us in that book, John chapter 1, for our first 41 John chapter 1 John 1 41 John Yes 141 Amen Please the He just found, I mean in that 141 he said, he found his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, we have found the Messiah which is being interpreted. After that one, you know that's Andrew. After that one, who ever heard about Andrew again? Tell me. That's the end of the story of Andrew. But without Andrew, there can never be Peter. If there's no Peter, there can never be first Peter, second Peter we are seeing now. If there's no first Peter, second Peter we are seeing now, there can never be Cornelius. If there's no if there's no Cornelius, if there's no what Peter we have seen now, the Jew, they will have gone astray more than the way we are thinking that they are going astray. You want to ask me why? Paul said, I was sent to the Gentile, Peter was sent to the Jew. But 
when you look at it very well, that's the end of the story of Andrew. Then through Andrew, without A, there can never be C. Because A brought the B, B brought the C. Let's say A has not brought the, the B, there can never be C. So if there is no A, if there is no Andrew, the Bible wouldn't have been completed today. Because there won't be Peter. So that's why that's your husband, that's your wife, that your children, they are very, very important. That your friends. They are very, very important. And that's why it's, I always, <laughs> I always be shocked. When I see many of us that we say we are friends or we are talking to them and then there's no our impact in them to even see them in deeper library church or even bring them or even come. I don't know the kind of discussion, the kind of word, the kind of things we are discussing when we meet. For 24 hours, for 48 hours, for a, a year. And then you cannot see impact of this is my church. And then you cannot see that impact in their life. I've always been surprised. To be sincere, I don't know what you are talking about. I don't know the impact you are talking about them. I don't know the kind of discussion you are having. To the extent that they are not, they are not enticed. It's not by forcing them, bringing them. <laughs> Recently, we see, I, I was talking with my brother yesterday. We see what we did, and I've been telling you, there is not any of my friend, there is not any of my family, there is not any anybody that closer to me, that close to me that will say no. If you are not going to accept that God I know from deeper life, you will accept it, but not that I will not introduce it to you. And not that it will not be in your house. And then example is the what we witnessed last week. My brother can bear me. I was the only one that, that saw the letter. But that's my life. That's my life. And then the impact of what you are doing, I don't know if I've, I've told us, when I was in the college, I always go, that's why I, 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 I was dreaming about all these messages, all this uh, ministry. Then I always go to one of my teacher's house. He, he, he was a member of, of the Celestial Church. Then I will go there and record the message. Then I will give him more. Later, any time I go there to record those messages, he will be the first person that will say, Matthew, I need this message. And I ask him, uh, Mr. Muhammad, he was a Muhammad, Muslim. Then he joined. I said, but why? You love our GS message. And you do know you are going to watch German church. If not grace of the Lord that keep me, the same thing that happened to him will have happened to me. He said, Matthew, wherever you have a battle and you, you get a rest, that's where you are going to stay. The only thing he forgot that eternity is the greatest rest. So my dear brother, my dear sister, the Lord, I don't know the condition it might have been now, at least before I left, it doesn't have, it doesn't, I don't want to exaggerate, it doesn't have, you have at least five messages of my GS. I don't want to exaggerate. Then for him to be saying, give me these messages, give me these messages, I don't know what he, what he means. I remember my MD, my, not my MD, okay, I can call him my, 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 one of my, the, my employer then. He was befriending a woman that married. 
So I will go. I will take all this uh, Bible outline. I will go there. I will drop it for that woman. I will do all this. I will do it. Meanwhile, the, the real husband of that woman was the celestial. Until one day, that woman said, I need this message of your GS. He gave me the money himself to buy the message for him. I don't know what will have been the impact. I remember when my, my, my employer heard about it, he said, uh, don't you know that his, past, his husband is a pastor too? It is a... But what I want to mean, I've half an impact. So my dear brother, my dear sister in the Lord, what is the impact you are having in that your friend? And one of our close friends there he was asking me that uh, somebody was asked uh, to talk about Pastor Kumoye. You know, he has come to the church once. He said that somebody was there. Then he said, ah, I told him about him. Uh, he said, uh, Pastor Matthew, do you have more of the pastor message of Pastor Kumoye you are going to give me? He has come to this church once. So if, if you have all your friends, you have all your family, I've told you my own regret. And I'm working on it. And God is going to be. But the one that is very closer to you now, are you joyful that your way of life, they are not living that way of life, and you are still happy to be their friend? And you are still convenient to be talking to them? And then you cannot show them that this is God that changed my own life, and I know He can change your own life. But immediately they bring the little things, a attachment of the world, it carries us away. Do not let us stop prayer upon them. They may be the Peter of tomorrow in Jesus' name. You be the Andrew of today. And God is going to use them mightily. The more God is using them, the more is going to your account. And then, I'm telling you, if they can be good in the world, they will be good in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. It's just a matter of dedication and God is looking on to you. That what are you going to say? Have you forgotten that Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 14? That Peter that Andrew brought in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Acts 2, verse 14. It was that Peter that brought all these people to Almighty God. As you are, it's okay, amen. Praise the Lord. Is that Peter that, we, that was preaching before all these people and more than 3,000 people were converted? If not Andrew, Peter would never have been. And that account go to the account of Andrew. God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not do it in vain. Make it as an assignment. I know many of us are trying. I know we have done all our best to bring them in. I know it's very difficult. Many times. I, I remember, if I, most of you know what I'm doing now, I, I touch out my, anytime I put things on the Facebook, go and look at it. I, I put more accounts. Because, the question all of them are asking me is that you make it. You do this. You are doing this. You are not remembering us. I, 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 anytime they said it, 
I remember what is in their life that do not let them. I'm hearing reports from Nigeria that this is what your junior brother is doing. This is what is skinning your senior brother. This is what is skinning this. This is what is skinning that. I'm hearing the reports. And I remember I, there, there was a day I took my brother. That, that program was Igu, Flying of the Eagle, that GS, uh, GS did. And I took him there. The next day, uh, the next Sunday, I tried to take him there. Is it only, oh, is it, is it, oh, is that, don't tell me about the palafi game. But if I can have a way that let me succeed, and I say, come, my brother, come this way. You can succeed through it. And you do not answer me, you shouldn't sub sub be surprised that I'm not succeeding than, than, than you. But when I went to the Lord, they, they are too far. And that's why you will see me in my Facebook now. You will see all Akamu, Odebomi Akamu, Shegun Akamu, Samson Akamu. You see all of them because I still want them to know there's nothing, the same mother that, that bomb is this mother that bomb there. The same father that gave birth to me is the same father that gave birth to them. The only thing that makes that different is Jesus Christ. And the many of you that are close to me, I never, I never had my witness on you. And only tell you, if not because of Jesus Christ, I will have been nothing. So I'm telling you then, if you can be like me, you will succeed more than me. So my dear brother, my dear sister in the Lord, personal infidelity is very, very important into your history, into your family. I know Mighty God is going to help me. I know Mighty God is going to help you in Jesus' name. So my, sometimes some difficulty you encounter, I encounter is. But if you are separated, you say fine. You will, you will leave a good example. But one thing I want you to know, if you succeeded in them, in, I mean in them, do not forget that you changed their generation. You get what I'm saying? You change their children, you change, you change their wife, you change everything. So that's why we don't need, if, if we fail to change them, that's me, their own generation too, if not by the grace of the Lord, it will be difficult for them to, to, to be changed. So, my dear brother, my dear sister in the Lord, I know you are open your eyes and you are saying, you know, I don't add any or anything for you about my life so that you can know how God has gone in my life. And I know he's doing more in the life of every one of you. The, what I want you to look at today now, as we are going to get up, look at that particular brother in your family. Although you are his junior brother, he has any upper hand than you. But you are better than that particular person because you receive Jesus Christ. Academically, you are not better than him. In age, age wise, you are not better than him. In all other things, you are not. But because of sincerity of you accepting that Jesus Christ, he makes you higher to the extent that even their own children, they are calling you father. And all those people are looking at your hand to make it to, I mean, before they eat. Or before they even do anything, they believe that you are better. But the only thing that makes you better, a better reward, like one of my account, is Jesus Christ. I want you to rise up this morning and call upon the name of the Lord. Look at that particular person. Please send them before God. That God, make me Andrew to this particular person. If God can make you Andrew to that particular person, Peter won a lot of soul to the extent that he was going and his shadow was in the people. Instead of them, they are bringing a lot of body onto you because they don't know Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. Genuine salvation. For this particular brother, for this particular sister, God help me to give it to him. 
and look at it. Let's say we have two of our families here that believe in Jesus Christ. This 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 fam this church will be full, but they are there. Call upon the name of the Lord. God, let me be fruitful. Nobody heard about Andrew again. But the work Andrew did can never be forgotten in the kingdom of God. It is because of him, Peter, come unto the Lord. Examine yourself. Are you a one leg out, one leg in? That make it very difficult to, conf to convince your brother, to comfort your friend, to tell them about deeper life because they see your secret more than the way the people of deeper life are seeing it. And as a result of that, you find it very difficult to confront them. I've told me my own. It was there, it was one leg in, one leg out. And they believe in the miracle that eternity. Only about two of them, more, and then that one does not even join me in the church. But call upon the name of the Lord. That whatever character, that whatever, that do not let your Andrew assist. That do not let your Andrew come out to the extent that your family, your brother, your sister, you will bring them to where you succeed. Call upon the name of the Lord that God will take it away. God will use you mightily for your family. Establish yourself in Christ. Establish, establish yourself in the word of the Lord. Establish yourself in the holiness. Call upon the name of the Lord. These all things that do not let my preaching to be effective before my friends, before my family. The, bo the, the Bible said, when Peter preached, the word pieces, it pieces the art of those people who are hearing the word. But unto you, they know you. They know that you have compromised one way or the other. And as a result of this, there's no genuity of the world. There's no power in the world. They see you as a cheater. Call upon the name of the Lord. The outside I know how to study us more than we ourselves. A sort Jesus Christ. And let the name of the Lord be praised. God is going to help you. I told us of the greatest thing our GSA is ever regretted is for his dad to go without knowing God. What about your mother? What about your dad? What about your sibling? What about your friend? Do you love them dearly? To the extent that you are thinking about everyone unto them, or you are mocking, you care not. My dear brother, my dear sister, rise up, up to your expectation. And God is going to use you. Why can't you take them as a project? That if this person does not go to God, he does not come free, I mean, give himself to God. I will not let I will not let him go. When they come unto you and nothing that is not uh, that is not biblical, do not be partaker of it. Let them go. From there, they will know the reality, they will know whom you are. And as a result of that, because they love you, they will love Jesus Christ and they will surrender. But if you say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You may lose them to hell. Call upon the name of the Lord. God will cry your effort. God will wipe away your tears about them. Oh, my dear brother, my dear sister in the Lord. Look at the benefit, especially all of us, that we are in this deeper library church of Charlotte. 
I want you to know, you know the love of Jesus Christ upon you. Why do you want your sibling to perish? God will help you. Take them out. Take the family, your in-law. Take them out. Your sibling, take them out. Remember that brother. Remember that sister. Remember that your immediate brother. Remember that immediate, immediate, immediate brother. God will help you. God will help me. We will not fish in a, where in an ocean there's no fish. God will help us in Jesus' name. And this grace is going to be sufficient for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we bring all our family, all our siblings, all our friends unto you today. Father, the people of the world, they don't congratulate, they don't congratulate, I mean, congratulate anybody that does not succeed. No matter how hardworking that person is, and then a good example, it's those people who are working hard labor, maybe like breaking stone to make money. Or people don't see them, people see those people who succeed in business and counting million. Father, we look at this and we say, Oh Lord, no matter how effort we put, if we can bring these people into the Lord. Our effort is still fruitless. The grace, the mighty things, power in word, that we will say a single word to our family, to our friend, and we see Jesus Christ, Father, give to us in Jesus' name. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. the Lord. Once again, you are welcome. I'll quickly go through our announcement. Covering up all the, all the programs. Today is Sunday. By the grace of God, our Sunday service starts at 9 a.m. Through 7:30 a.m. The Bible says that we shouldn't forget the gathering of the same. So when we gather like this, it shows our obedience unto the Lord. And for those of us who have made at that time. Lord God will not allow us to go home empty handed in Jesus name let's keep on inviting friends families, relations and everyone that we come across that we bring them to the Sunday service to hear the, the word of God it will be counted for us in Jesus name Every Monday is a Bible study from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Bible, the Bible is our tools. It is our constitution. As believers, when we study the Word of God, we know our rights. So it's a time where we come to have a microscopic view of the Word of God, to evaluate the Word of God, to have the in-depth knowledge of every rema that is engraved in the Scripture. So let's 
invite our friends let's let them know what god is doing here and what we are all learning here and as they come for the expository word of god their life will be turned around in jesus name bible study start by 7 to 9 p.m just two hours the lord god will bless us more abundantly in jesus name and on thursday is our online conference prayer from 6 p.m to 7 p.m the online conference prayer that will map house to pray and to and to intercede pray for handle the prayer request and as we are standing and interceding for the people god will do for us those things that we don't even ask in jesus name god says i'm looking for those that will stand at the gap to stand in the gap to pray and to, and to intercede for our nation for our brethren heaven will intercede for us in jesus name to join the online conference prayer there is a dialing number which is 712-775-7035 and the access code is 344823. At a fine time to join, your life will not remain the same in Jesus' name. That reminds me also our ninth video every first and third Monday of the month from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. As we come to watch and pray and to hear the word of God, we will increase more in faith and in knowledge in Jesus' name. Pray without season. And as we meet up with all these activities, we will not be tired in Jesus' name. And let's not forget that heaven is our goal. Eternity is our goal. And the more of the word of God we hear, the more we come together as, as brethren, we kick the devil far away from us. If there are any other announcement, the pastor will relate to, to us. The house fellowship for today will be at, um, at our house from 5 p.m. So let's try and be there. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Let's give our offering, offering time. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless your name, we give you praise for whom you are. But from what you've given unto us, we are bringing this to a king of God in appreciation and to propagate the word. Father, as we are giving, O oh God, I pray that you will open the windows of heaven and shine your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. Father, bless the hands that give Bless the hand that don't have to give. That everyone, O oh God, will be a partaker of your divine blessings. Provide, O oh God, more so that we'll be able to give more. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. In the manner to do. I didn't manage Amen. It's time for praise and worship.
Praise the Lord. Are we happy to be here? You know, thank God, Mother. Thank God, Mother's Day is one day in a year. I've had uh, probably three hours sleep since yesterday now. And that made us to appreciate women. God bless you, mothers. Can we all rise up? It's time to worship. And I just don't want you to look at people who are standing in your presence. But just look at God because it's God we want to worship. If you look at us, you will just be an observer. But if you worship God in spirit and in truth, you will be a worshiper. And I pray we will all be a worshiper in Jesus' name. Somebody asked me, say, why do we worship? We worship because he is God. He is our creator. He's your creator, he's my creator. So that's why we worship. Because he is great. And if you remember the person you are worshiping this morning is great, you will worship more than before. Because he is above all and everything. Somebody asked me, why do we worship? Because he is good. Has God not been good to you? God has been good to me. And this morning I want you to worship like you have never done before. Because he is genuine. If have heard I ever have any fake person, or somebody has confused you or denied you, God will never. He's a genuine God. And this morning, I want you to worship him. Let's go in the spirit of worship. You know, I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4. He said, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. Love does not dishonor others. And our prayer this morning is God will give us that kind of love. To love our brethren, to love our sisters, to love our mothers, to love our wives, to love our husband, and to love our children. And as we present our worship this morning, I pray God will put that love to every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Give me love for our mother. Love for my boy, love for my boy, love for my boy. Give us love for our mothers, love for my boy, as you die. Be a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. This is the day. This is a day of joy, a day of joy, a day of joy. This is a day of joy, a day of joy, a day of joy. This is a day, this is a day of joy, a day of joy, a day of joy. 
This is the day of joy, the day of joy, the day of joy. This is the day, this is the day of joy, the day of joy, the day of joy. This is the day, this is the day of joy, the day of joy, the day of joy. Show me the way to love you, Jesus. Show me the way to love you, Jesus. Show me the way to love you, Jesus. I am ready. I want to do so. Show me the way. Show me the way to love you, Jesus. Show me the way to do so. Show me the way to love you, Jesus. I want to do so. Show me the way. Show me the way to love my Jesus. Hallelujah. Show me the way to do so. Hallelujah. Show me the way to love my Jesus. I am ready. I want to do so. You see that way that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in me. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in Thee. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. This is the day of joy, the day of joy, the day of joy. This is the day of joy, the day of joy, the day of joy. This is the day, this is the day of joy, the day of joy, the day of joy. You are worthy to be this in you are worthy to be praised, Amen. You are worthy to be praised, Amen. God, you are worthy to be praised, Amen. You are worthy to be praised, Amen. You are worthy to be praised, Amen. God, you are worthy to be praised, Amen. God, you are worthy to be praised, Amen. You are worthy to be praised, Amen. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised, Amen. You are worthy to be praised, Amen. God, you are worthy to be praised, Amen. Hallelujah, glory be to God, Amen. Amen. Jesus, we reign all over the world. 
Jesus you will All your power and your universe Come with me Jesus you will Come with church Jesus you will In my life In my life Jesus you will Jesus you will All your power and your universe All your power and your universe Come with me your prayer this morning, why not thank God for saving you? He saved you from the trap of death. He saved you from condemnations. We really appreciate all of you, our mom, our wife, for your care, for your patience, for your endurance. And your or a good example. I pray that Almighty God will continue to be the one of us in Jesus' name. I want to apply, employ the children department that they uh, they shouldn't be missing the message. God will help us in Jesus' name. I want them to calculate their time very well so that by the time the message starts, they are here. Especially, and God is going to help them in Jesus' name. Um, we shall quickly listen to that by the time message starts, all of you will be back because you can't listen to the message then. And the purpose of the service is the message. God will perform for us in Jesus' name. Um, we shall quickly listen to uh, at the book of Bible reading, at chapter 1. At chapter 1. Alexander Scorby. 
The Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about an hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas.